One of the questions that many crypto users have, not just beginners, is where are crypto coins actually stored? If you have some good crypto knowledge, you may know that cryptos are not stored in any wallets. The wallets just store the private key that allows you to spend your crypto coins, so where are they? One thing to get straight here is that your crypto coins are not stored as a file in a folder or anything like that. So with that out of the way, there are two types of blockchains, and the type you use determines how the blockchain stores your crypto, or more specifically, what are your crypto coins at the first place. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, we will talk about these two types of blockchains, so grab a snack, and let's get started. So, like what we have said, generally, there are two types of blockchains, UTXO-based blockchains and account-based blockchains. Don't worry about the names, we will explain them pretty simply. Let's start with the UTXO blockchain. UTXO is an acronym for Unspent Transaction Outputs, we will explain what that name means in a minute. But in this blockchain model, there are no balances stored on the blockchain, and the coins are stored as a list of unspent transaction outputs. We know that the idea of this UTXO can be hard to get your head around, so let's see an example so you can understand it. Let's say that John wants to send two bitcoins to Jessica. To prove that he has these two bitcoins in his transaction to Jessica, John needs to link or refer to previous transactions where he received two bitcoins or more. So, here is two previous transactions where John received his two bitcoins. As you can see a bitcoin transaction has two sections, inputs and outputs. In inputs, the source of the coins is mentioned, like from where did you get the coins you are trying to spend. In the outputs, the destination of the coins is stated, like who the coins are sent to. So, as you can see transaction number 25 has an output to John for one Bitcoin, and also transaction 34 has another output to John for one Bitcoin. So, let's say that John didn't spend any of these two Bitcoins, now, it is kinda weird, but it is said that John has two unspent transaction outputs, he can now use them as inputs in his new transactions to Jessica. So, when this transaction reaches the miners on the Bitcoin network, they verify that the two outputs have not been spent before, and then the transaction gets confirmed. That leaves Jessica with a UTXO for two Bitcoins, which she can use as an input in a new transaction in the future. So, when you open your wallet, it actually scans the blockchain for any unspent outputs you own, and adds them all up, to show your balance. So if you find that your balance is 10 bitcoins for example, it can be just 1 UTXO for 10 bitcoins, or 2 for 5 bitcoins each, or even 1 UTXO for 3.277 bitcoins, and another one for 6.723 bitcoins, it all depends on the transactions you make with other users. So, like what we said, there is no balance for you, or for any other user stored on the bitcoin blockchain, your wallet shows you the balance by adding the unspent outputs you own. A very important thing to mention here is that each UTXO can be used or spent one time only in one transaction, and once it is used in any transaction, it is considered a spent output, and cannot be used in any transaction again. What that means is that you can't use just half UTXO for example, and use the other half in another transaction. So what if you have one UTXO for 5 bitcoins, and you want to send just 2 bitcoins to John, how does that happen? Well, what happens is that your 5 Bitcoin UTXO will be used, and then two outputs will be created from this transaction. One output to John for 2 Bitcoins, and another one for 2.999 Bitcoins, to return the excess amount to a new address that your wallet controls, this address is called a change address, and this output is known by the change output. So this new change address is fully yours, and you can use this change UTXO in a new transaction. You may have noticed that the sum of the two outputs doesn't equal 5 bitcoins. That is to account for the transaction fee that needs to be paid for the miners to confirm the transaction. Here we assumed the fee was 0.001 bitcoins, in all the previous transactions we explained, we assumed there was no fee, just to keep it simple and easy for you to understand. 
So the way UTXO blockchains work is actually pretty similar to how you use cash. If you for example, went to a grocery store and bought groceries worth $50 and you have a $100 bill, what do you do? Well you certainly don't cut it in half and spend half of it, you just give it to the cashier, and then he gives you your $50 change, so that is very similar to how a UTXO work. The difference here is that on the blockchain, you don't need to trust the other person to return you the change, it automatically returns to you. One last thing to note before we move on is that more than one UTXO can be used in one transaction. Let's say that after a while you received a UTXO for 2 bitcoins, so now, you own two unspent outputs, one for 2.999 and another one for 2 bitcoins. If you want to send 4 bitcoins to Jessica for example, the two outputs will be used and two new outputs will be created, one to Jessica for 4 bitcoins and a change output to you for 0.998 bitcoin, which is after paying the transaction fee. Examples of blockchains that are based on the UTXO model are Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Cardano, which uses something called Extended UTXO Model, which can be a topic for another video. But now, let's get to the account model of blockchains, which is used by Ethereum. In this model, the blockchain actually stores accounts and balances. So, coins are just balances assigned to accounts, and when you make a transaction, let's say, sending two Ethereum to John, your account balance will decrease by 2, and John's balance will increase by 2, there is no outputs, no change, none of these things in this model here. The miners just need to check if you have enough balance to complete the transaction. So this model is pretty similar to how your bank account works, you have a balance that you can add to it or withdraw from it however you want. So what about the ERC20 tokens, like the Shiba Inu or Chainlink? Well, it is the same idea actually, there is no actual coins stored anywhere on the blockchain, there are just balances of users. Before we end the video, let's talk a little about some advantages of each model. So, as you may have noticed, the account model is much simpler to understand for normal users, as people always tend to imagine their coins as balances they have in their accounts, not as some of unspent outputs. When it comes to the privacy of users, the UTXO model has an advantage, as when new anonymous change addresses are created, they can be hard to link to a known owner, although it can be done by advanced chain analysis techniques. The account model on the other hand makes it hard to trace the source of a specific Ethereum coin for example, which can be done in the case of Bitcoin. The last thing we will talk about here is smart contracts. The account model is better for smart contracts, as it is easier for the developers and the smart contracts to work with accounts and balances rather than working with unspent outputs, so the account model is easier to code for developers. Maybe the exception here is for Cardano, which uses smart contracts with a UTXO model, but we will leave that for another video, as it can get pretty complicated. At the end of this video, we hope we gave you a simplified idea to help you visualize what are crypto coins and how they are stored. And if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel. And turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.